Good evening, good evening. Yes, it's that time, it's that day. It's Tuesday the 29th of April 2014. It's 9pm, so this must be Vapor Scene. Yeah, here on VaporTrails.tv. I hope you're all having a uh, splendid night out there, not suffering too much from uh, the hay fever that seems to be going around. Lots of pollen and stuff, making uh, people cough and scratch their eyes only to get worse as we get um, our very short summer. Do you think it's going to be a short summer or a long summer? Don't know. Um, it's cold in Australia. Yeah, it is in Western Australia anyway. Uh, I was talking earlier on today with Vince Van Herden, um, who, as you may or may not know, has been the subject of some legal shenanigans over in uh, New South Wales in relation to his company, Heavenly Vapours. Um, and we're going to be talking to him, or I'm going to be talking to him, um, a little bit later on in the show, uh, we had a conversation earlier on via Skype, uh, and it's not a video Skype, unfortunately, because he doesn't have a webcam, um, but it is audio. So uh, we will hear what he has been getting up to uh, and uh, what he plans to do next with uh, what's going on. Um, but all that is going to be um, after the titles, which uh, I think about a role now. You're watching Vapor Scene. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. Yes, good evening. Yes, it is Tuesday. You're watching Vapor Scene on Vapor Trials TV. A warm welcome to you if you're watching live and hello chat. Uh, and uh, a warm welcome to you if you're watching on YouTube or on the catch up page at vaportrials.tv. Um, got a few news stories from uh, the States tonight, um, one from the UK. Uh, and also, we're going to be looking at the case over in Australia, uh, which could prove. Is, could prove a turning point? I don't know if it could. Um, it's certainly going to be a turning point for Australians um, living over there. Whether it's not, it's going to affect the whole world. It's yet to be seen, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, we're going to start with yet another fire. Yeah. Um, and uh, this was in the Daily Mail. Um, a mother's e-cigarette exploded after she left it plugged into her car for just 10 minutes, melting through the back seat and filling the vehicle with noxious black smoke. Um, that there is the seat with the lady in question, um, which uh, seems to have got a little bit of damage to it. Yeah. Um, a bit further on, that is the battery and the Clearo that was... Uh, wasn't attached to it because uh, it was charging. Um, it looks like it was on the back port, um, as some cars have, as my car does have, a, a, a cigarette lighter port at the back, uh, which uh, I use for my sat-nav, strangely enough. Um, but yes, it exploded. The uh, e-cigarette and charger were made by Prestige Vaping. Maybe they were sold by Prestige Vaping, um, but the car adapter plug was bought elsewhere. Yeah. Um, and Yaz, Yazin Patel, director of Prestige Vaping, said it had sold thousands of the same starter pack Miss Taylor bought, and this was the first time a problem had occurred. He said the firm sold car adapters that must be used with the device, as stated in the user manual, adding if the appropriate charger was used, we would take further action. Um, Miss Taylor claims that neither the e-cigarette nor the charger came with a manual. And uh, Philip Le Shirley from the Royal Society for Prevention of Accidents said, it is important not to leave e-cigarettes to charge unattended. We've seen the same story over the past couple of months, haven't we, with um, devices being charged with charges that were not meant to be used. Um, I guess the question is, if you buy a USB port, charger port, um, from either a reputable company or from a 
auction site or other place um, is it going to give you the the wattage and ampage um, that that device needs so really it's the same thing isn't it using the charger that comes with it or buying the charger from the company that provides the e-cig um, in order to maintain um, the correct charge and if something does go wrong at least then you can go back to the company concerned uh, and say um, that this has happened um, same old story though wrong charger for the wrong device or a charger not designed to do the job um, it's going to keep happening but then laptop batteries are going to keep exploding and so are mobile phones so uh, it's the same watchword isn't it don't leave things unattended um, certainly don't leave them unattended in the back of your car especially with the summer all two weeks of it coming up um, because obviously the heat in the car will make a difference as well won't it um, just seeing what chat was saying there the charger is not the bit that you put in the light socket that's right disco does yeah it must have been a USB adapter which then the charger was put into um, whether or not that gave the correct voltage and ampage out um, who knows I mean I've got one for my phone which is a 2 amp out um, but that would be too much for say my Blackberry that only requires one um, so yes it's, um, it's one of those things that's going to keep coming and coming and going and going all the time um, whether it's a mobile phone exploding a battery or whether it's an e-cig um, you know lithium iron is its chemistry so you know if you don't use the correct method to charge it then you're going to have issues but there you go moving swiftly on from that one uh, and I noticed this tweet The popularity of e-cigarettes has exploded in recent years with not much regulation or control, but that's about to change. The Food and Drug Administration has taken its first steps toward regulating e-cigarettes, the popular battery power devices that use water vapor to deliver a hit of nicotine. E-cigarettes are considered a tobacco product because nicotine is derived from tobacco. The FDA proposal would require manufacturers to disclose the ingredients of their products. You find companies now uh, basically mixing this product uh, in, in, the, in the back rooms of their shops. They don't have the proper settings to do so. The regulations would prohibit sales to kids under age 18, but that does not halt online sales, television advertising, or flavors some say are attractive to children. The FDA needs input from the industry and public before the rules are finalized, a process that could take a year. The rules would also affect cigars, water pipe tobacco, and nicotine gels. And the FDA's proposed regulations of e-cigs has caught the attention of many Valley vape shops. As News 3 Sandra Gonzalez reports, they welcome the federal action. At Vapor Rage in Henderson, there's an air of satisfaction as the FDA attempts to regulate e-cigarettes. Owner Nick Mullen says he's all for it. If anything, it's just going to help the community. Um, being that they're going to um, regulate the e-liquids is going to make sure that the customers are getting better quality ingredients. Stores like Mullins are attracting a lot of customers. They offer e-liquid in flavors from fruit to desserts, and many people are using these products to wean off smoking. Elephant Vapors owner Chris Tan says the FDA sets standards and demands a better product, something he too favors. Set the standards, um, not just for where it's made, but how it's made, the ingredients, um, and you know you're going to get what you're getting when it's labeled. And sometimes what adults like, so do teens. And that's something Tan is very aware of in his store. With, like with all adult products, kids are always curious too. So it's up to us to 
you know, make sure that they don't get their hands on it as much as we can. The FDA will consider setting an age limit for e-cigarette products at 18. At Elephant Vapor here in Las Vegas, the owner welcomes the regulations, especially about the age limit. He already refuses to sell to anyone under the age of 18. Sandra Gonzalez, News 3. I mean, with the popularity of all those things, you knew at some point the FDA had to come in on this. Yeah, yeah that, that's right. And of course, uh, other state law enforcement agencies have said, look, we've got to do something at least to get it away from kids to make sure yeah. that it doesn't fall into those hands, into those young hands. But it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens with this. And, and I don't even know if there are regulations on where these uh, e-cigarettes can be used. You know, that's something yeah, that happened um, with tobacco use. A lot of people have put the crimp on that. But it's a huge growing industry, so we're going to see what the FDA really does. Is. Yes, back to me, and hopefully you can hear me this time, uh, and I think um, Ray Boring was right. I'd forgotten to put the audio on that previous slide. <laughs> Schoolboy error. Uh, apologies for that. Yes, so um, a couple of vendors there in the valleys who are uh, all in favour of the regulation. Um, I wonder if they've actually understood exactly what it's going to mean for vapors and also for their businesses. Um, and uh, I was watching chat there as that was playing through. Some of the things I can't repeat. Um, you need to come to chat. You need to come and watch live uh, and then you can see everything that happens in chat. Maybe I'll bring chat screen up on next week's show. Who knows? Um, and someone else who we have featured recently, Dr. Nancy, She's been at it again, and I found this little video. Uh, and be prepared if you've got something strong to vape on and something strong to drink. I suggest you grab it now. It's a battery powered device designed to mimic the feel and sensation of smoking, minus the harm of cancer causing smoke. But is there science to back this up? Here now are three myths about tobacco free e cigarettes. Number one, e-cigarettes are a safe alternative to tobacco cigarettes. Well, the jury's out on this one. There are well-documented harms linked to the more than 60 cancer-causing chemicals found in tobacco smoke. And e-cigarettes remove those harms because they're tobacco-free. But the liquid nicotine used in e-cigarettes can still contain other chemicals, including diethylene glycol, something you'll also find in antifreeze, and propylene glycol, an irritant found in fake smoke machines. We don't yet know the long-term effects of inhaling these vapors. Number two, e-cigarettes can help you quit smoking. Well, this too is not proven. We do know that 70% of current smokers in the United States want to quit, but the sad truth is the majority of them fail. One of the reasons may be the nicotine, the addictive ingredient found in both traditional smokes and e-cigarettes. But there are currently no long-term studies showing that e-cigarettes are more successful at helping smokers quit than the FDA-approved nicotine patches and gums that are currently on the market. Which brings us to myth number three. E-cigs are not regulated. Well, this is not entirely true. The FDA announced it's taking the first steps towards e-cigarette regulation, laying the foundation to put e-cigarettes in the same category as tobacco cigarettes, which could mean banning their sale to anyone under 18 and requiring manufacturers to disclose what's in e-cigarettes. The FDA has not proposed banning e-cigarette advertising and online sales, nor flavored e-cigarettes, but they say that doesn't mean it's not possible down the road. Yes, she's at it again. Um, she should really think before she puts out a video like that and actually get some facts, um, some proper facts into what she's saying, in my humble opinion. Um, and wearing a white coat, yes, I saw that in chat. Um, yeah, if you've got somebody who, who is a doctor um, wearing a white coat, you should take more notice, shouldn't you? Yeah, I don't think so. Um, that lady needs some serious tweeting. Yeah, just search for her on Twitter, at Dr. Nancy Snydenen. Yes. Anyway, moving swiftly along, because I can see the time is ebbing away. Um, if you didn't know already, there's uh, this story flying around at the moment, and has been for quite some time. Um, 
and this was in the uh, the Sydney Morning Herald. Electronic cigarettes, the truth behind the smoke and mirrors. Uh, the debate over, just checking my sound there, the debate over the health and legal implications of e-cigarette use has divided experts across the world. Local authorities will now need to face up to the issue after e-cigarettes were banned in Western Australia. Uh, and this is a story in relation to Heavenly Vapours um, and Vince Van Herden. And uh, he's got a, a crowdfunding page up to try and get some uh, to money to pay for the legal challenges that are in front of him. Um, and it's currently uh, $17,100 uh, Australian dollars. I started a company in, in Perth uh, selling electronic cigarettes a few years ago. Um, at the time, the industry in, in Australia and even globally was really in its infancy and there weren't, there weren't many competitors, there weren't many vendors, full stop. And our goal at the time was just to start a company that provided high quality products. You know, I, I started off as a vapor. Um, I, 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 was a, I was a smoker since I was probably 13, 14 years old. Um, smoked all my life and ultimately ended up with terrible, terrible asthma. And um, one day I saw a friend using an e-cigarette and you know, I was like, oh, what's that? And you know, where'd you get it? And did some Googling and I, I found um, Totally Wicked in the UK. Mm -hmm. And th that's where I bought my first um, e cigs from. And um, I got them and the transformation was instantaneous. I mean, the, the moment I used it, um, I didn't need cigarettes anymore. I, I threw them away and I was a very, very happy, content convert. And um, but then the, what happened was, after I'd been using it for about a month or so, I went out to a, a big night out with some friends, woke up the next morning and I'd lost my e-cig. And it took me two weeks, you know, almost two weeks to get my stuff from Totally Wicked. And at the time I didn't have much money and I couldn't actually afford to rebuy it straight away. So what did I do? I went straight to the shops and I bought some cigarettes. And I probably smoked for a couple of months before I placed my second order with Totally Wicked. And... Once I got it, it was the same story, I immediately quit smoking. But the story repeated and, and after that I realised why the hell can't people in Australia buy them in Australia? And that was the impetus for starting the business. So we started the business and there weren't many competitors. Um, we, we were doing quite well, uh, things were growing and that was pretty much the, the story of our, of our downfall in the end because at the time when, when this all came to be, uh, came to pass, the health department raided us because somebody that knew a guy that worked for the health department saw us appearing on you know the front page of Google, and so they just picked us. Uh, they probably I don't know whether they looked into us first much or not. Um, we had always assumed that if we were doing anything wrong, which we didn't think we were doing anything wrong. I mean, how could we be? I mean, all we were doing was providing an alternative product that had less less harm, guaranteed less harm. It had to be a, a healthier alternative. And we thought if, if we were doing something wrong, cause, and we looked into it, there, were, there was nothing we could see that said we were doing anything wrong, we thought they would call us up. They would send us a letter. They would um, open a dialogue and say, we, we think you're, you're doing something wrong or something like that. Well, that's not what happened. Um, just one day, out of the blue, um, a bunch of black SUVs ploughed up onto my lawn, on, you know, up the driveway and onto the lawn, and a bunch of guys would hop out and, and you know, rush to the front door and have a search warrant and yeah uh, you know they had a search warrant so in they came and um they tossed the place about you know looked through everything and they were there for I don't know, maybe 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 an hour and a half um and when they left they had you know several garbage bags filled with electronic cigarettes under their arms and um and left with a warning that we were being charged and uh, yeah, a week or two later, I got a, a letter saying that you know we were being charged with breaching Section 106A of the Tobacco Controls Act, um, which was a law that was written never ever to to encompass electronic cigarettes or personal vaporizers. It was a law that was introduced in 2006 to combat those. I don't know if you guys had them over there, but we had these lollies here. They were called fads or fags. They looked like cigarettes. Uh, they were candy cigarettes, and they were clearly trying to entice a new generation, you know, to normalise cigarette smoking to to a younger generation. And and it was evil what the what the cigarette companies were doing. And so the law was a good law, but um, 
at the time, electronic cigarettes basically didn't exist. The legislators that wrote the law never heard, you know, never heard of e-cigarettes. Certainly didn't imagine it encompassing them. Um, but that's that's what happened. Um, that's what they charged us with. And we, it, they then held on to our stock for almost two years um, without doing anything. We were never sure during that time whether we'd broken the law or not, so we couldn't continue to trade because we'd been advised that the penalty was $10,000 um, for, for the first offence or $20,000 for any subsequent offence. So if we continued to trade, we'd potentially be facing $10,000 plus anything they could prove that we'd sold thereafter, getting to a point of ludicrousness in terms of financial penalty. Um, and so, yeah, about two years later, we, we finally got to go and have a day in court. Uh, it was just at a local magistrate's court. And after all the evidence was presented, you know, for and against, uh, the magistrate reserved a decision to deliberate over the facts, certainly being a test case, that needed to be done. And we came back a few weeks later for the ruling, and the magistrate determined that we hadn't breached Section 106A. Um, she went on to detail that... Uh, in her opinion, cigarettes don't look like ballpoint pens, um, you know, which, which the devices we sold looked more like a ballpoint pen than anything else, that cigarettes weren't metallic, you know, they contained plant matter, they didn't have a button. Um, she basically just said, this is not covered. It's, this, that's not what the law was for. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, but that's effectively what, what, what the verdict was. And we thought that was it. We thought, okay, great, um, we've... We've come out of this and we've set a standard for the industry. This law wasn't designed to do that and we can move on. And then, I guess it was probably two and a half, three weeks later, I get a letter in the mail uh, advising that, no, nope, uh, they've appealed it to the Supreme Court. And we were shocked. I mean, we couldn't believe that they'd actually appealed it. Um, the, the magistrate's ruling was pretty darn clear. But they did. And um, uh, I don't know how long passed, a month or two or three, and then we were back at the Supreme Court. Uh, we made our arguments, they made their arguments, and ultimately the justice upheld the appeal and found us guilty. And in doing so, she, she actually completely expanded the, um, the original decision. Um, obviously, she, she changed the original decision, but her, in her conclusion, she expanded it. Our legal advice had always been that we were, we were only selling at the time two models. These were, gen, these were like Gen 1, 2 slash items, mm -hmm. um, Ego Ts and 510 Ts, um, exact same stuff that, that Totally Wicked at the time was selling. And we had always been told that if we lost, those specific two models would be banned. But the other things, you know, a, a CE5 or any, any of the new Gen 2, Gen 3 models would have to be taken on individually. But this justice said, no, 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 anyone, any, any product that involves a hand-to-mouth action and results in the exhalation of vapor resembles a cigarette and encourages people to, you know, that a, that a casual observer um, seeing somebody using an electronic cigarette on the street, regardless of its shape or form, would, would, um, would see a person smoking a, a tobacco cigarette and would be encouraged to smoke tobacco cigarettes and, you know, would head out to, to the deli and buy some smokes. Um, I take it you can still go to the store and buy 20 packs of, uh, 20 pack of cigarettes oh yeah oh, absolutely uh, <laughs> cigarettes here in Australia are 25 or 30 30 in a, in a pack and they cost almost one dollar Australian per cigarette um, the vast majority of that something like 85 90 something percent of that price is is tax so <laughs> it does raise a little question I mean yes you can buy something that we know kills you that that will cause dis death and disease but you can't buy a product that doesn't look anything like it, but someone has determined resembles it enough that absolutely that would encourage people to smoke tobacco. It's happening all over the world, Vince. As, as we know, um, e-cigs are being lambasted and they are becoming less available than conventional lit tobacco. And that's something that obviously we are all fighting for uh, across the world. Um, there's moves happening in, in the States with the FDA, um, over here with the European Parliament, we're having the Tobacco Products Directive um, 
past and, and stuff going through limiting certain devices, but it's not as extreme as what's been happening over in Australia. Um, so the appeal was upheld, uh, the health department appealed, and that was upheld against you. So all your, all your stock has, has been confiscated and, and you've been fined how much in total? Uh, the the actual judgment hasn't happened yet. It happens on the 9th of May, uh, about 10 days from now. Um, the judgment happens. At this point, my legal costs to date um, are around 20,000 um, AUD. But in addition to that, now that they find me guilty, I'm now liable for the prosecution costs. So that's another 13,000 that they want. So it's thirty-three thousand. Then there's the pecuniary penalty, which you know may, may well be ten or more thousand dollars. So that takes us sort of to around the forty-five thousand dollar mark. And if we appeal, which we have to appeal, because this issue is it's, it's not about my company, it's not about me, it, it's about the entire industry. If if I don't appeal this, a case law precedent is set, and West Australia becomes the first place in the world to ban the hardware, irrespective of what it looks like, mm -hmm. um, it gets banned. And, and once that happens, um, it's likely the other states in Australia will try and use that um, as, 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 ju uh, as justification for, for expanding it across the states. And then what happens? Well, you know, then, then you're going to have people like Mike Daub, you know, he's the president of the Australian Council on Smoking and Health. He, he's going he's gonna, to you know, be lobbying along with the Cancer Council, believe it or not, the Cancer Council in Australia doesn't want e cigs to exist or personal vaporizers to exist. Um, so, so then what they're going to do is they probably, uh, this is my opinion, I'm just speculating, but it, it seems likely to me that then they're going to talk about how there's a loophole that exists where Australians can import hardware and nicotine um, from offshore. They'll call it a loophole. And then that'll get banned. And then what will happen is Australia will become the first country in the world to completely ban personal vaporizers or electronic cigarettes, whatever you want to call them. And once that happens, what are the other countries going to do? You know, because what I'm seeing in all the media coverage all around the world, you know, as you just mentioned, there's, there's this constant anti-personal vapor, anti-e-cig movement going on. And none of it seems to be founded in fact. In fact, it, it, it appears to me that those that um, are, are purporting themselves to be the experts are either grossly ignorant, um, I mean, you know, horrendously so, of, of all the studies that have been done to date, or I don't know, maybe they're, they're evil or have some alternate agenda, because we've got a huge body of scientific studies that have now been done over the last, you know, so many years that show that at the very least this is a least a less harmful alternative. We've got products that have been um, uh, approved by the FDA and the TGA that have the exact same ingredients, and then we've got people like Mike Daub saying, "Well, we've got no we've got no information on what the short term or long term effects are." and you should use the approved nicotine cessation products. It doesn't make any sense. In, in, in the UK, you guys have probably got things like maybe Nicorette, Nicorette Quick Mist? Yeah, we've got Quick Mist. We've got, the, we've got the little lozenges. We've got the gum. We've got the uh, plastic tampon, um, a.k.a. Yeah. the inhalator, uh, yeah. which is hand-to-mouth, obviously. Um, yeah, same, same thing. Yeah. yeah, so we've got the same kind of products um, that you've got in Australia. However, the use of electronic cigarettes as a cessation method has overtaken conventional NRT quite substantially now. So some people are yeah. using the NRT um, to quit smoking. Um, some are using e-cigs to quit smoking. But the majority of users are using e-cigs to continue to use nicotine in a safer, safer way. Um, and it, I just find it so crazy what is happening over there. Vapocene is proudly sponsored by Health EV, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid.
I've ever and I've ever elected best in Yorkshire for your AC needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-Elixir.co.uk. iVeber and iVeber-Elixir.co.uk are proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv. Now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. Here is the second part of the interview with Vince Van Herden. Um, what is, what's your next move then, Vince? Look, at this point, we, we are doing everything we can to g gather the funds required to appeal this decision. We, we can't let this decision go uncontested. Um, it's, it's a ridiculous interpretation of the law and the implications of not contesting it and letting it go through are so big. Um, as I said before, it's likely if we don't if we don't win an appeal, that this becomes law in WA. It ultimately may become law in Australia, and that could ultimately mean that it becomes law in other countries. And what is the result of that? The result is millions of people that are currently addicted to nicotine are forced to use tobacco that we know is going to make them sick and in some cases die, this, we, look, we're, we're doing what we can right now to get the money together and it's going to be tough because I'm fighting an opponent who uses my tax money to appeal me and, you know, there's no knowing where, where that funding stops. It, it basically doesn't, you know. I've got to come up with the money and, and this has d d absolutely destroyed me financially. I was the smallest business you can imagine. I was a guy who just tried to start a business, running it out of his home, had a dream that you know I'd, I'd, I'd create a good business and provide a great service to the community and ultimately it would turn into a, a, a bigger business and I'd make some money and, and, and everyone would be better off as a result. But they took me on and I've got nothing. I've spent every cent that I've got fighting this. They shut me down. They took all my stock. I couldn't continue to trade. I couldn't subsidize my costs in any way. I've basically had to use my credit cards to pay all the bills. And I've, I've, got, I've got to the point now where any further costs are literally going to result in me going bankrupt. So at the moment, we've started a, a GoFundMe. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of GoFundMe in, in the UK. Yeah, um, I'm showing the page a, now. A, uh, and I, I yeah, showed it a little it, while ago as well. Yeah, it's it's a look. We, at the moment, we've just passed about seventeen thousand in in a, in in funding donations, but we need we need a lot more um, because if if we appeal this and we win, fantastic. But that doesn't stop them from appealing that. And if we lose, I'll have to pay the costs of my legal representation for the appeal, in addition to the prosecution's costs of defending the appeal. 
And I can't do it. I just can't do it. I want to do it because I know I have to. I've got a moral, ethical obligation to do this for everybody because it's not about me anymore. It, it, certainly in the beginning, it, it, was, it was about me defending my business interests. But now it's, it's about so much more. Lives are at stake based on this ludicrous decision. And if I don't stand up for it, and I'm the only person who can, because I'm the only person who's been charged right, and found guilty, and so nobody else can turn around a year from now and appeal the decision. I've got a very finite period of time when I can actually appeal this. And I need, I need QCs. I need Queen's Council. I need the best legal minds in Australia to step up and help me out with this. But unfortunately, most of the QCs, um, well, they don't, they, you know, they're not in the business of, of charity. So I've got to come up with enough money to get the best legal minds to knock this out of the courts and, and, and set things back to right, because right now things aren't right. Are there any other companies that have been raided in, uh, in Perth or no. the Shrine area? No. And, and how many other EC companies are there in your area? Look, it's really hard to give you a, a, a number on that. Uh, we're still definitely in the infancy mm -hmm. in Australia. Um, I would probably guess there'd be maybe 100, maybe 200 companies if you if you included like you know um the the small the small guy who has recently taken up the business and, and is trying to do it but you know there's 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 not many significant players in in the industry and i think that's why they're doing it right now they they, they picked someone that they knew couldn't possibly afford to fight this all the way to the end so they could get a cheap win so for you you're going back to court on the 9th of may is that right we're going back to court but there's one proviso here at this point in time, we haven't yet made enough money to go to back to court. And if I don't make the money, I can't throw my entire life away and go into bankruptcy to do it. I, like, it it's, not even, it's not even about the bankruptcy. If I can't pay the lawyers the money to represent me, I can't appeal it. And we're at 17000 We need double or triple that minimum before we can go anywhere. We've got a few weeks left. And, and this is where, where I want to call out to anybody who's listening to your show or, or, or reading any of the publications anywhere to realise that this is not a Perth issue. This is not about West Australia. This is about social, moral, ethical high ground. This is about doing the right thing, about standing up and realising that it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter where it's happening because if you let it happen in one place, it spreads. If you allow, if you allow them to create a precedent in one place, It'll happen in the next place and the next place and it'll hit a critical mass. And before you know it, you know, you, you'll be sitting there saying, this doesn't happen, this wouldn't happen here. This wouldn't happen to me. This isn't going to affect me. Yes, it will. Eventually, it will. It might be two years from now. But if you let this happen, if you let them get an entry point, you know, a, a beachhead, right, where they can start pouring in the troops. This is where the battle turns. And if we all stand together, and honestly, all it takes is one dollar. One dollar from every vapor around the world. If every vapor just gave one dollar, we'd have millions of dollars to hire an, a massive team of QCs. And I guarantee you, we get a big, big team of QCs together, they are going to smack the health department around and show everyone that this is absolute rubbish, makes no sense, is not in the public interest, and we all get to continue having a healthier life where we get to actually enjoy our old age and be there for our grandkids. Well, I really hope that, um, that people donate to the fund um, and um, allow you to carry on the fight for, not only for Australians, um, but um, for the rest of us too, because we know what will happen um, if it gets banned in New South Wales, then you've got the rest of the states that are gonna follow suit uh, and then other countries will look to Australia uh, and see what they have done. Um, and we could, um, we could end up all in a bit of a sticky mess. Um, it's, uh, it's certainly not a good point to be. Um, and uh, I hope that uh, you come back um, if you do appeal and uh, fill us in on what's we're going, been going we're on. We're going to. We're going to, we're going to make this work. I don't know how. Um, we need to all come together to make it work. But I, but I, I honestly believe that there are enough intelligent people out there, if only in the vaping community, that we are going to make this work. It doesn't take much, even a dollar, five dollars from just, you know, enough people 
and we will be appealing this and we will win this and and this will go away we will we will put a stop to this um with the appeal thing uh with the gofundme page if if you if if anyone is not in a position to donate which i completely understand we we we're all in different positions but if you're not in a position to donate even posting a comment a supportive comment will be very useful because at at a, at a point in time in the future i do plan on sending every single comment that has been posted to the minister for health here and asking them to to look at this and address this and every comment helps so even if you can't even if you can't help us financially if you, even if you can't contribute a dollar that's fine if but if you can take 30 seconds to at least post a little story about how 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 uh, personal vaporizing has changed your life for the ben- for the better that has that has weight as well so i'd appreciate it if people could at least try and do that yeah absolutely um and i know that your cause and your story has been um all over facebook and all over twitter uh, and will continue to do so and i really hope that everybody out there um who watches the show uh, either live or on catch up um goes puts a comment down, gives you as much ammunition as possible to take to the, uh, the health ministers in, in your country. Uh, and I hope that some of the news channels um, can facilitate you at least getting, getting a meeting with these people as well. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I, I really would like to have a debate, uh, particularly with people like Mike Daub, and I'd like to call into question uh, his complete lack of ethical coverage of, of the issue. You know, he's entitled to his opinion. That's that's fine. But completely ignoring a massive body of, of, of evidence and stating straight out that there is no evidence is is completely misleading. And now, now he's either ignorant of the, of the research, but if he's an expert, I would imagine he should look into it. Um, that, that, you know, I'm not an expert. And yet I know of all of these studies. We're seeing the same thing over here. Um, recognised experts are being ignored. Um, evidence is being cherry-picked from and taken out of context also in various reports. Uh, and a lot of people cite evidence but um, and cite studies, um, but yet they don't put them out there, um, which is uh, an interesting yeah. fact as well. So listen, Vince, I'm not going to take up any yep. more of your time. I know it's um, getting on to 10 o'clock over there in Australia now. Um, so uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. I hope you come back and give us the next instalment of what's going on. And I'm sure we're all going to keep a very, very close eye on what is happening there over in Australia. Look, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to, to share my story and, and what's going on. And uh, I look forward to coming back to you with um, some really good news. Yeah, so. that will be, that'll be really good. Vince, thank you so much. Uh, and we'll speak soon. All right, thanks, mate. I really appreciate it. Cheers. Yes, that was uh, me talking with Vince Van Herden in Perth, uh, Western Australia, earlier on today. Uh, and he was telling me and us all about the fight that he's been fighting for uh, over two years now since uh, he was raided and had all his equipment uh, confiscated and the ensuing uh, legal actions that are uh, ongoing. Um, hopefully on May the 9th, he will get a, a good outcome, um, maybe not. And I was watching chat there uh, as that was playing out uh, and a lot of people have donated and I'm sure he'll be really appreciative of that. Uh, and also mention of the vendors. If there are 200 vendors in Western Australia, if they all put 500 Australian dollars into the fund, that's 100,000 Australian dollars, more than enough um, to start the ball rolling. Uh, and then of course, any vendors around the rest of Australia, um, if they put in as well, then um, they would have a decent fighting fund. Um, but us as a community have come together, as we always do with any campaigns that are going on um, and people are donating to the cause um, the question is, where is it going to stop? Which country is going to be next? Um, and is it going to be a case of you can't use any cigarette in Australia at some point? That 
remains to be said, doesn't it? Remains to be seen. Currently, there is DE Talk on the other channel, if you would like to go over to that. And there's RY4 Radio as we speak at ry4radio.com. Um, tomorrow night, it is Tin Your Tip with Gary and Mark. And then Thursday, you have Dave Dawn and Sav, plus guests for VT Talk. It's Dave's Tackle Box on Sunday with Dave and probably Dave. Uh, and then it's the Haze Hour on Monday with Dave and Kat. And I will be here next Tuesday, hopefully with a better connection. Thanks for sticking with me, guys in chat, and uh, I will see you next week. Tati bye. Thanks for watching. is proudly sponsored by Health Evade, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid.